Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome to my craft room and a warm welcome to my design team project for LDRS Creative. This is an A2 size card. Fancy that with a matching envelope. I thought it would be nice to put quite a few A2 size cards up using LDRS Creative stamps and dies just to show off all the wonderful, wonderful sets that are in the LDRS Creative line. So I'm scoring it at the five and a half inch mark. Take your bone folder, in my case the Teflon bone folder, give it a nice crease, and we're going to begin. I put a line one third of the way across. Take any style of tape, tape it down because we're going to be using the leaf, the little leaf that is in the heat wave uh, stamp set and we're going to just randomly stamp it all over and this is going to give us a border on the side. <laughs> you know it's so much fun using an A2 size card. I haven't, you know, like I said, I don't do many of them but I want to put up as many as I possibly can in the A2 size to not only inspire you but also to inspire me to create on a smaller surface and I think it's a wonderful way to learn different techniques. So I'm putting down the leaf set here. I'm just rubbing, I haven't used this leaf, so I'm rubbing it there and I'm using these four colors which will all be on my blog. All you'll have to do is press the link and it'll directly take you over to the product. So I'm randomly stamping it with the four colors like I said easy peasy just turn your block around in different directions choose three or four colors to put on there and then I'm going to take my Prisma pencils and we're going to do some coloring I love leaves you can't go wrong can you this is a really pretty leaf too in this set with the heat wave set and then we're going to use the flamingo as well and that beautiful rectangle uh, die set, the scallop rectangle, and I'm going to show you a different way to use that as well. So now that we have our colors, all you have to do is match them up with whatever, um, you know, oh first I'm going to heat set it with clear embossing powder. I always do this. That way nothing is going to streak or uh, smudge. So it's an easy way, just put your LDRS Creative uh, clear embossing powder on there and easy peasy and because LDRS creative inks are hybrid you have that time element to wait it's still a little wet it's somewhere in the middle between a dye ink and a pigment ink you have your hybrid ink love it they're beautiful hybrid inks juicy and like I said you have the time to put your clear embossing powder on heat set it and it's easy peasy coloring and then when you add something to the background in my case after I get my pencils out here I'm just putting three or four colors nothing complicated two or three colors would be terrific on each one of the leaves here then I'm going to use the Ganze Tambi starry colors in the starry colored set and the links up like I said will be on my blog and look how easy this is. Uh, this card did not take me long. I have four cards to go up and um, I wanted to put this one up for my design team project first. And you'll notice I'm leaving little areas that leaves have uh, with having all different tones of green in them. It's so pretty, isn't it? And then you had the purple tape in my case to keep me from going over to the other side of that. And then we're going to move right along. I love this set with the different gold hues in it. I love the white at the top. It has that glittery effect like the falling glitter <laughs> coming down. And you don't have to really uh, go over it as much as I am going over it. Just spray it down and off you go just coloring whatever gold colors you know I like to put a little bit of gold in all my projects the paintbrush is the number 12 in the black velvet line very nice brushes but you can do this with any brush uh, except a detail I think it would you'd see the streaks more 
a number 12 is a nice brush size to use. So I'm going to take the heat gun to this. I'm going to heat set it, as you can see right here. And then we're going to move forward, do it on the front and the back. If you're new to card making, I have a few new subscribers that told me that they are new to card making. And that's what triggered me to make an A2 size card. Now, because I got the back dirty, you know me and, and white cardstock. <laughs> I cut it off and I'm going to use this side to put my little flamingo. I'm going to cut it off. Yeah, you can tell I got my hand on that. There's something about white cardstock and my hands that always connect with ink. <laughs> So, anywho, I'm going to take a piece out, and I'm, this is a new um, piece, five and a half I scored it, I'm starting all over. Then I'm going to have this section on here, nothing wrong with that. You don't have to directly, you know, you could do this same method. This is the LDRS Creative Scallop die, isn't that beautiful? I have a card coming up using that, so I thought, wow, that would be beautiful, but it didn't go with my little flamingo. There's my water set there. I thought I'd quickly show you that little bucket that I use because you press the button, the water goes down and fresh water comes up. I used that when I did the gold with the Gonzi Tombi uh, paints. And now the little flamingo, so crazy cute. And I put one in the center, then I offset one down at the bottom, one at the top, and the one in the middle I stamped off so it was a lighter image because I'm going to color that with my Copics. As always, I'm going to pour, because it's hybrid inks, I have time to pour my clear embossing powder on it, and that will help my coloring. Easy peasy coloring, my friends. So I'm going to heat set this with the clear embossing powder. And the reason why I'm doing an A2 size card is because some of my new subscribers that uh, wrote me in the comment section on, on my tutorial said they're new to card making. So I wanted to show them how easy it is to make an anything card. And I call them anything cards when you can add a sentiment later. You don't have to put it on a card in case you know you don't have a birthday. You have um, a get well you need right away. So that way it makes this card accessible to any occasion. And I think the flamingo is so crazy cute. So I took two, you can't see it because I'm coloring so fast, but I can pretty well tell you that it's an YRO2 that I'm using first. And then I take the YR04 next because the 04 is a little darker. And I'm just going over the feathers, a little bit on the head, and that is it. I mean, that's a little bit on the feet, on the knee knuckle. <laughs> and uh, I was going to put uh, on there um, something like uh, you're one of a kind. But then I thought, you know what? I'm going to wait and see. Put a little bit of grass flicks with two different greens underneath your little flamingo. And then you can take a couple of gray markers like I did so that, you know, white cardstock isn't always white. So I took out the uh, C0, the C2, and the C4, the three of those in the C family and colored the white ones in and left that beautiful coral colored image in the center. And now in this rectangle, scallop rectangle die set, this is fabulous. I can't wait to show you this. Now this is the outside piece. It's It has two holes, one at the top, one at the bottom, and it has all the scallop dots around it. I'm going to take some tape because this is going to stand out of the image and it's going to be my focal point. So uh, oh, this one die set, I'm going to show you in future cards how uh, versatile it is. And there you have it. Look at all the nice dots. You have the two holes to put ribbon through in my case. And I want this to, I cut it off not because I made any uh, boo-boos on it. <laughs> it's because I want one to be lower than the other. So off we go. 140 pound cardstock, whatever 
poundage. A heavy weight, you know, from a hundred up would be nice as using it on your uh, as your card base to my newbie friends, my subscribers, my new subscribers. Now, this die set, don't snip it off. Don't snip the first three layers off. And if you don't, and you run it through your die cutting machine, look what you end up with. The most beautiful frame you've ever seen. And the inside frame pops out so that you can raise it up as a 3D image. And then the next two features stay attached like this with no line. Uh, if you separate them, the holes on the second part stay in your cardstock. It doesn't break it open if you, you'll, you'll understand as we keep going. Then you want to take the little gut pieces out with your pokey tool. And you can see it kind of has a little flower. I will show you that later on. I'm kind of speeding it up so I don't have a long tutorial for you. And um, I just think it's so pretty. I love this tag look. So that's going to be for the inside of my card. And now we'll work on the outside layer. I took this um, glitter paper. It's a six by six glitter paper. I'm sorry for the email that just went through. Uh, it always happens, doesn't it, on my videos? And uh, we're going to raise this kind of tag style with the two nice uh, ends on it with the holes in it with some scotch tape. And I'm only going to raise it up two layers. So I'm just figuring out what I have to have here. And isn't it so cute? I love the look of this tag. And I like the fact don't cut your square or your rectangle dies. Keep the three outside edges together when you run it through your die cutting machine. Then you can cut this little oval out. There's two ovals. There's also another center oval. So I ran that glitter paper, a tiny, tiny strip uh, of the, it's kind of like an orange, um, the color that's in our nice flamingo is in this glitter paper. It's so crazy pretty. Then I, there it is, look at that. I'm going to show you how wonderful this rectangle die set is. Versatile plus. And you can see the little flower edges. There we are. That's the three, the same four greens I used on the leaves. I'm gonna put the leaves ex right on the frame. Just keep twisting it in every direction. Then we're going to use clear embossing powder once we get the four little colors, three colors, whatever. This matches the front of the card. This makes the front and the back just seem to blend themselves together. You're really going to love uh, working with this, you know, one stamp set, one die set, and a whole lot of inspiration. It's wonderful. Now, once you have all of this beautiful hybrid ink stamped with your leaves, you're going to use, it's a hybrid ink, remember, we're going to have time to put the clear embossing powder on it. LDRS makes a wonderful embossing powder, both in clear and in white. Then we'll heat set that and it just stands out beautifully. Isn't that a gorgeous frame? And this is from not cutting down your rectangle um, scalloped rectangle die set. Leave them together and you will end up getting the center which comes apart and it keeps the next two together. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. I love this element. You could sew different uh, ribbons through here if you wanted to. You could use, uh, oh, and you can grow a flower right out the side as well. But think about it. You could put gems, you could weave. Um, if you have any, this is for my new subscribers that are new to card making. If you have embroidery thread, right there, these holes would be awesome. I went back to my Prisma pencils, but you can use any pencil and color it like the holes weren't even there. Just color them in, have a couple of tones, you know, different tones to set the leaves apart. And we're on our way. This is a piece that we will use for the inside portion of our A2 size card. So cute. I think you're just going to love it. You're going to love this set for sure. 
and uh, Angie has come out. She's on HSN, so make sure you check her out. I'll leave the dates and that on my blog so that you'll know when to go over and check HSN out when she shows all the new, wonderful, lovely, heartfelt, designed um, cards and dies and stamps and stickers and awesomeness coming up. Once again, I love the that Ganzai Tambi um, paint. It's beautiful. The Glimmer Golds, yummy. And just put it right over top because you want to, I wanted to match the outside with the inside. And I'm going to, once that is down, once I get the, it's called Starry, it's the Starry Collection. Once I get that down, I'll pour that clear embossing powder over it wet and I'll dry it up with my heat tool and look how beautiful this is going to look. Let's get heating it up. And it's so good to be back. I was creating cards for uh, the last couple of weeks. And um, I have a couple of other things to share with you. But I won't do it on my design team project. But I do have a few things I want to uh, yak at my subscribers about. And I'll do that later on. But uh, LDRS Creative. And I know if you've looked over at the products, especially the clearance, you're not going to get anything like that anywhere at the prices that are there for beautiful stamps and dies. Please check it out. And I stamped another one of the flamingos in the black, the LDRS Creative Little Mini Black Cube. And uh, it's called Raven. And I'm going to take the three C's. I love working with the C line, the grays. Um, it's just nice. You can use the 2 and the 4 or the, or the C0, C2, and it makes the white just pop. Please ignore the congrats. That's I'm working on a different card. So I grab my large darning needle and I put two different colors of the coral ribbon. One's a Stampin' Up! coral ribbon and the other is just one out of my stash. And this one I used is the Stampin' Up! I put it through the main corner hole. Then I went down, then I went back up, leaving the loop on the back side. Then I followed it through to that one and went down inside and came up the back of the same corner hole. Then I went off to the right, to the left, and actually it came out looking like a bow. And I used three of the holes there. And the one is like a petal, the bottom one. I'm trying to show you how I do it. My main hole for this is going to be on the corner. And then I'm going to work it down. You can do it any way you want. But I will slow it down here for you to see. I wanted it to look like a self-maintained bow. But working out of three holes. The large hole and the, the two side by side there you'll see it once I get going you don't see the back and I'm going to raise this up so you can make as much mess as you want on the back it does not matter you can loop it as many times as you want and there you go I take the pin and I think you'll see in the photos what I'm talking about raise it up exactly how you want it to look and then cut it off get your scotch tape and then you know, tape it down and it's not going to move and it looks beauteous. You're going to love it. Trust me, it looks so pretty. This dye is amazing. Now I'm sticking with making this little bow. Let me show you. Up through the center, down and through the same hole because I don't care what the back looks like. And then I'm going to go into the lower hole which is kind of a little oval. Then I'm going to go back up to the same loop. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's so easy peasy. Once you see the picture and up close, you're going to understand exactly what I'm doing. Cut it off on the back and you have yourself a pretty little, it uh, looks like a bow to me, without the ends uh, going, you know, in two different directions. It's all attached. And just play around. Put some uh, ribbon on the your needle, of course. This is a long darning needle that I'm using. And uh, just fill in those holes, the three holes at the top. 
I think once you get your ribbon in your darning needle uh, that it works for you. This is 1 8 ribbon and um, this one is the Stampin' Up ribbon that I had but I will leave everything as I always do on my blog as a link. So you can design whatever you want, scotch tape the back, get any pattern with these holes you want. You can go all the way around, uh, you know, doing three in the coral and three in black, whatever. So here you can see how I put the scotch brand tape on the back. Then I grabbed two of the ribbon colors, a dark and a light and I went over the holes in the back. So I drew those ribbons through the holes from the back to the front. Then uh, you have that tape to hold the ribbon down as you design the front of the card and wrap it around. So that's what I did there. You're going to raise it up too high. So you've got one Scotch brand roll of the tape down. That's going to hold your ribbon. Then you have the other uh, tape, scotch tape over top of that, then take the back off and it will hold the bottom portion. So you can see here that the double sided scotch roll is holding the tape down so that I can design the front. And I want each of the colors to show in the front just side by side. I don't want to wing spread them because it will, you know, hide the beak on the one flamingo. So whatever it looks like on this side, just ignore it because <laughs> the design on the front is what I was worried about. Now I raised it up too high so that the tag pops up and on my card base, the frame around it is going to seat down. So I have some playroom because I use the Nouveau liquid glue. Any white glue is great once I take it off my finger there, yes. So any glue, so once you press it down, all the way around that tag will seat itself to the bottom and the tag, because it's too high with the scotch tape, will raise itself up so pretty. Yeah, I tried to do that, but you, you want to cut it with scissors because you risk moving the glue uh, portion of the cardstock if it's not dry. This is such a nice card. I'm going around it with my, uh, once it dried, I waited for it to dry. Then I'm going around with my distress tool. I'll leave the link to that. That's the Tim Holtz distress tool, I think. And distress the edges. That takes off any imperfection with your cutting. And it looks kind of shabby chicish, so that's kind of cool. And fold it over and it's just a nice, nice design. I cut another thin layer of my black cardstock. My black cardstock comes from Michaels. It's 110 pound, super thick. It's the thickest black paper out on the market as far as I'm concerned. That's how I feel about the Michaels black paper. It is thick. It's just the same as my 140 pound weight. I cut a little strip off just to add the black you know, so it all streams together, just all lives together there in the same space. You have two black flamingos, and so you have that black just, you know, making it. It just makes it, just adding that to the edge as far as I'm concerned. And then I'm going to put some glossy accents down on top of it because you've got the glitter from the 6x6 glitter pack on the left. Now you're going to have the shiny, shiny on the right. And I put some on the beak of the coral colored middle flamingo. And I, I just did that with my um, Copic Friendly marker. Then I add a little bit of glossy accents on that. And then I'm going to take out my glitter glass. I have this little shaker with glitter glass. It's not sparkle. It's not glitter. It's chopped little pieces of glass. And while this was still wet, I wanted to add some into this element because it matches the coral sparkle paper. Yeah, you got glitter, you have shine. It's all there. Everything is so pretty. Yeah, so there we go. I'll heat set that just halfway. Then I will add my glass. There it is in my old-fashioned uh, salt shaker. Yeah, oh yeah. Look at that. 
You didn't think he was going to appear yet, did you? <laughs> I wouldn't forget my little dog. So here we go. I'm just going to press it in there because we already heat set it, you know, approximately three quarters of the way. I just want a little bit of glass glitter on there. And now we'll work on the inside. So let's go. I'm going to add a piece to the inside. You know I love my cards thick, whether they be A2, A4, A, whatever. I like my cards to be very thick and firm. So I'll add that piece to it, and then we're going to design the inside. I used liquid glue to seat the double frame around there. So you want a nice detailed glue uh, distributor there to put the glue on, or use your double-sided sticky paper, you know, stick it. Uh, if I had a thought of that, I would have put that through my die cutting machine so that I didn't have to use liquid, but it did either or, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Now on this, I will add one, I think I just put one layer on this one to raise it up from the frame. I stamped the Flamingo just in black, colored it in with the Copics, same as I did on the front. I think it's so cute. Look at that. Uh, everything is like, you know, matchy-matchy. You have the green, the black, uh, whatever. And make sure you add, don't have this flamingo floating in the air, okay? Make sure you add the little wisps of grass underneath him just to ground him. After we do this, we're going to just a couple of greens that match the leaves in there. And I needed to have some sequins for the inside. I'm just looking at a few things there <laughs> in the edit. <laughs> you never know what's going to come into my videos, right? And uh, yeah, once I get it open and I'm satisfied, I grab my honeybee sequins. Any sequins would be fabulous. And it's the galaxy sequins that I used. That will be on my blog links as well. I added the C markers to my flamingo so it does look white you want to put a little bit of gray in there or a little bit of uh, lilac would look nice as well so let's get moving along we have the inside completed I think it's really pretty there's the uh, honeybee sequins I grabbed three of the smallest ones that I could this is a little glue stick I have and I'll leave the link to that as well it is a quickie glue stick yeah, the pinpoint has the pinpoint roller on it. I'll make sure I leave that for you. It's nice to have. And, uh, or your pick stick, whatever you have there, so you can pick up three grays. I did three different tones of gray. I thought the black would be two. You know, there isn't anything really um, black, black on there other than the stamped image. And when I stamped that, I stamped it twice so it wasn't really dark. I just kind of got a gray flamingo there. Now, now, now to the uh, envelope. Once we get everything down, I stamped one of the flamingos in the left corner of this envelope. And uh, this is a Stampin' Up! envelope, I believe, in my stash of stashes. And I used two coral color Copics. Then I will take two or three little grass colored Copics and flick them underneath the little flamingos uh, long legs there. Isn't that a cute card? And with the gold shining through, I added a little, in this gray I added the, the lightest color of the flamingo coral color with the Copic. And that was the YR01 if you're interested in a really light, light coral color. Here's my stamp created especially for you by Carol Held. Then I went to grab my clear LDRS Creative um, embossing powder and instead I grabbed, uh, let me just see here, it, it's a glitter. It's a sparkly glitter which looked fantabulous. I really liked it. Let me get up. It's called um, let me see, ultra fine holograph holographic uh, embossing powder by Wow. I, I just grabbed it by mistake, but it did work out because in this uh, holographic uh, sparkle, it has green, believe it or not. I'm trying to get it there, but there is a time 
after the video you'll see the green in that that sparkles and there's the die keep it all in one don't separate those three and there you have it my friends I grabbed the heat wave stamp set and there's a sentiment that says enjoy the lazy days of summer and I thought it would look nice underneath the flamingo using the Raven hybrid mini ink I'll stamp it down there and then I'll, of course, use the clear embossing powder to cover it so it doesn't smear going through the mail. And that completes my one design team project here using the Heat Wave stamp set and the scalloped rectangle die set and the LDRS, of course, their clear uh, embossing powder and so much more. Please check it out. You're going to love LDRS Creative Products. I know you are. I love the way the grass just flicks there. Thank you to my new subscribers and for leaving comments to let me know that you are a new subscriber. Thank you to all my subscribers. You know how much I appreciate you dropping by. I appreciate your comments as well. Isn't the font on this stamp amazing? I love it. And there you have it, my friends. I'm going to do a close-up. You have the gold, you have the glitter, you have it all, don't you? Yeah, create, there's the green. See how that just, ah, oh, just adds to this card. So you take care. I'm going to see you shortly on another tutorial. And like always, my friends, that's it and have a blessed week.